Hello, I'm Richard Bowes, the Bold Explorer. I'm Julia Hartley. And we are out um, on a cold February day doing a recce today. We're actually doing a recce for another of these stories, the stories of uh, Tales of Old Sussex by Philip Mercer. And we're at the Ouse Valley Railway, uh, sorry, the Ouse Valley Aqueduct. Aqueduct, no. Viaduct. Viaduct. Um, yeah, because yeah, aqueduct does water. With, this yeah. one does trains. We're in, we're in the Ouse Valley. The Ouse Valley something. Oh, the Ouse Valley Viaduct. That's the word. I'm, yeah. Anyway, I know what I'm talking about. Every now and again, trains do go on there because this is the London to Bright, the London to Brighton railway route, and um, the Ouse Valley Viaduct was built in 1841 with a, a, over a million. Dutch bricks, I believe. The irony is that just over there is the uh, the Canals. the River Ada uh -huh. that was canalised or canalised turned into canals turned into a canal, and um, up along there, where the bricks were brought to build the railway or this viaduct, and of course the railways supplanted the, yeah, the, canal the canals. Um, I was hoping that a train, I'm lingering here, I'm hoping a train will go across. Obviously it hasn't. I've made a video about all of this on another occasion, but we're here because we're looking at the location. Here's a train. Here's one. Lovely. If you stay long enough, the train does come. Get to, get to it express, it says. Oh, it's what it was. Hundreds of years or so before any of this was built, this was farmland, still is farmland, and the story that I'm investigating is this about a hunt. Now you know about hunts, don't you? I know a bit about hunts. So we're going to investigate that, but we're going to walk that way and try and investigate a bit more. So come and join us. We're at the, we're directly underneath. The, uh, the viaduct, which is a fantastic place. It's fantastic to stand here and look down at the, uh, the sort of de ever decreasing, um, well, not circles, are they? They're ellipses, I suppose, of brick, which go on down there. What do you think, Julia? It's pretty cool, isn't it's it? It's amazing, isn't it? An amazing feat of engineering. It is, yeah. I, I absolutely love it. And, and if you look above our heads, I forget how tall it is. It's, um, it's like 100 feet or something. Yeah, and drips of water, as you just said there. Oh, it's getting ever closer to the camera. <laughs> Falling on our heads. We'll just move around <laughs> a little. It's a shame it's such an awful day. You can hear the echo, it's quite nice. <laughs> Hello? Can you hear the echo of the splats? Yeah, let's just turn the path up, why not? <laughs> anyway, we're going to leave the, uh, the viaduct. That was a sort of a by the way. In our video, we've got to go through this kissing gate. I'll let you go first. I don't know. The story that we're investigating is about um, two factions, I suppose. There's a, there's a squire who likes to hunt and there's a landowner who doesn't want him encroaching on his land. And I, I imagine that must still go on. People probably have to, you know, put up with it because the fox goes running and then the, the hunt the goes... The hounds go chasing. And... Yeah. It must be a difficult thing to keep hunt come running after. Uh, them in order. Oh, another another kissing gate for us to go through. And this gets a bit out of hand in the story. Thank you. Okay, a good view of the, the viaduct behind us now. Anyway, all this, of course, I think the story takes place in the about 1730, something like that. This is the story that we're searching for, the location of. And there's... There's a big house that the squire lived in um, and there are two big houses in Balcombe which is just up the road where presumably he's from because I think it was the Balcombe Hunt. There is a little farmhouse here. I don't know how old that is but the uh, protagonist, thank you, we've got another kissing gate here, who lives in a, in a farm and obviously he, he's a, a small landowner. Um, and you know one of the problems that you have with these old stories they're stories that were collected 
and because they were collected and presented in a book no one ever thought that I suppose in the future somebody's going to be going around trying to find the exact location of these places and you know we don't know how much of the story is embellished how much of it's just completely untrue or anything you know just following on these things but we know it was in the Ouse Valley we know it was near the River Ada and it was somewhere here so a house like this and this location could well have been the place. It looks pretty old and substantial. It's very lovely. Very quaint little college, cottage, really. Quite a humble little cottage. Yes. Oh yes, here we go. Of course, there's this gate. I was looking at the signage and then there was the kissing gate which tells us exactly where to go. There's an open gate there. But it's oh yeah. <laughs> Oops. You get here a, a sense of the countryside. I think that's really what I was trying to sort of get. Um, over there, look, you've got those meandering hills beyond us. And uh, it's quite a misty day today. But the hunt, you know, you would have heard the hunt and you would have seen them from a distance with their horns and their red jackets, yeah. even back then in the 18th century. You would have heard it from quite a distance, yeah. And today you can hear all the crows. Yeah, there's a lot of crows. Found a log. <laughs> nice log for the fire <laughs> on a day like this. A bit damp. It is a bit damp. I found a twig. Oh yeah. With some, I think it's staghorn moss. And oh, some right. little, little tiny green cup moss. Oh okay. But, uh, that yeah. looks nice. Good air out here then. And then some Good air, yes. older. Oh yeah, cones. some older cones. Yeah. They're so cute. Beautiful. We're down here by this um, rather lovely footbridge which is just behind us um, and it goes over the Ouse the, in the actual valley now of the Ouse Valley at the bottom where the River Ouse comes up that's canalised and um, it's interesting because the story that we're sort of wrecking or trying to uh, that wrecking sounds bad doesn't it? it sounds like we're trying to wreck the story <laughs> but that we're having a wrecking re reconnaissance, reconnaissance mission for um, is this is where this is this dividing line and there's this business about the squire is told to keep his side of the river while the put upon landowner is to keep on his side of the river as it were and of course the hound cuts across wherever he cuts across not the hound the fox mm. cuts across and the hounds obviously follow the fox and then the horses follow the hounds and so it goes on but it's interesting here's the footbridge so we're going to go across the footbridge Nice, nice footbridge. Oh, it's a lot more sturdy than it looks. Yeah, not a flimsy one. There's a rather lovely tree here. Yeah. It's an oak tree. Um, it's like it partially fell. Well, no, it did fall and then grew up. Yeah, it must have fallen some time ago because uh, the size of the trunks that have then since grown up from the laying trunk yeah. is uh, they're quite, quite substantial. substantial. <laughs> yeah, that was the word. And, and actually, there's lots of holes in here. Yeah, that looks just going like... to cross this little fence just to have a look inside. You can see the, the inside of the tree. What do you call that? The bowl? I guess so. Yeah. Of the tree, and it goes up like that. It's all very nice. And then some nice little wildlife homes in there. Yeah. It looks a bit too small to be rabbits. I'm not sure what what they would be. We did see a... Do you think uh, a rabbit wouldn't get in there then? Well, rabbits uh, rabbits are a little bigger than that. Right. So, um... What other creatures? They, not hedgehogs, they don't do that sort of thing, do they? No, well, they, they probably will use it, but yeah. they, they wouldn't... I don't think they'd dig them. I don't know, actually. I really don't know enough. A bit more. It's very soggy underfoot, however, and there's some... A bit of flooding there, or a patch that looks like it floods quite a lot just down there, actually, because of those the grassy reeds that are growing out of it. In the distance, every now and again, you, you do still hear the rumble of the railway, which uh, reminds you of man 
mm. even though we're here where there's no car sounds and I've not heard any aeroplanes, which is a bit odd. It's nice. <laughs> it's very nice. It's very lovely. So this is the, this is the landscape. Probably not a lot changed from, what are we looking at, 300 years ago? Yeah. Uh, when the story took place. There's, a, there's another farm actually just in front of us on the rise, just beyond this oak tree. I don't know how much you can see of that. And again, that could be where the uh, protagonist's place was. Who knows? It is fascinating. I find it's just fascinating to walk in the footsteps of these characters um, and get a sense of what it must have been like. Yeah, it's a particularly lovely little walk. I like these little oak, young oaks that are... Yeah, just on our left here. Twiddle round so you can see. Look at these. They are young, aren't they? Yeah. Compared to the one that we've just seen, uh, these are, what, only 10 years, perhaps? Yeah, something like that. Something I'd like say. that. Well, that's the farmhouse we saw. Um, we've run out of time, unfortunately, on this little excavation. Excavation? Ex Exploration. Um, but, yeah, we got a, I've got a good sense of the landscape that the story took place on. I wanted to present the story from somewhere around here and do it, but it's too cold. It's cold, isn't it? Yeah, it's getting chillier now. And the weather is just bleak and, and grim. The air so, is getting moist. And the air is moist. I don't want to get the moisture in the camera. So, But it's given me a good sense of what it must have been like. It's, We've got the mists and we've got the trees disappearing into that mist and the greyness um, and we've got the, the wet, boggy stuff. I Clear. don't know when the story took place, what time of year, it doesn't really say, but it must have been between the hunting season, which is it's between November, November to till, March. Uh, yeah. Um, so it could have been, you know, this is a typical time of year, it may have happened. Um, but it's, it's very nice. We've seen some fantastic trees. It's incredibly atmospheric, this whole place, isn't it? So, uh, yeah, look out for that episode when it comes. Thank you, Julia, for joining me. Thank you for bringing me along. This has been a fantastic out. walk. Um, we're going to go and have a look at Balkan, but probably in another video. So, let's head back. We'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching. And until the next time, don't forget to follow, like, subscribe, and all that sort of jazz. And Become a patron. Yeah, support what we do, puts petrol in the car and all that. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.